Hostage, a Todd Mills mystery, book three in the series. Arthur R.D. Zimmerman, publisher, Scribble Pub. Narrator, Eric Ost. Chapter 35. Lyle Cunningham sat for a long time at his kitchen table and tried to decide just how he should handle this. He reached for the phone, started to drag it across the Formica surface, then stopped. He envisioned his mother in that hospital bed, Wasted away, he recalled holding a paper cup full of scrambled eggs and remembered how hard it had been just to get her to take a bite. He pictured her listless face, her fading memory, and the blood that sporadically dribbled from her nose. The stench, nothing he'd seen in the Marines, had prepared him for his mother's death from AIDS. Yet despite his ambivalence toward Clarendon and everything he represented, he had no choice but to call this one in. He pulled the phone closer dialed the number, and when a deep voice man answered on the other end, Lyle said, It's me, Cunningham. What's up? Mills just called. Lyle's boss chuckled. See, I told you I knew he was part of this. I knew there was no way Miles wasn't involved. Perhaps, replied Lyle. So, what did he say? He wants me to meet him. Excellent. When? Fifteen minutes, Lyle asked. So what do you want me to do? What do I want you to do? I want you to meet Miles and attach yourself to him. That's what I mean. I don't want him to move more than two steps away from you. Got it? Yes. Miles obviously knows something we don't. And with any luck, this will be the break we've been looking for. So don't lose him. Let me remind you, your ass is grass if you blow it. Don't worry, said Lyle with a sigh. I know what to do. That's what you said before, replied the man, slamming down the telephone. Lyle hung up and then came to his feet. He'd be more than glad when this one was over. He thought as he left his small kitchen entering the dining room, he found Koshka, his sinewy black cat, lying right in the middle of the table, bathing in a pool of morning light. Hello, kitty, he said, running one hand over the length of her spine. His hand passed from his pet to his gun and shoulder holster, which were also coiled on the table. He took out the gun, flipped open the barrel to check that, yes, it was fully loaded, then settled the weapon back to the holster. Okay, he had no choice, no getting out of this one, and not much time, he realized glancing at his watch. He slipped the holster and gun over his left shoulder, grabbed his leather coat from the back of one of the dining room chairs, then started for the front door. From a small entry table, he snatched his keys and also a small beeper-like device, which he clipped inside his shirt pocket. He was about to flick it on, but then he thought, no, not yet. Shit, thought Lyle. Heading out the door in one way or another, he hoped to be done with this one by the end of the day, if not a whole hell of a lot sooner. A Gay Mysteries Audiobooks I think it is easy to hate a label, but a face humanizes the word. So this effort is twofold, to offer comfort to those like myself that your world didn't end because you don't fit into the view of acceptable society on both sides. And in hopes of helping those with family that are LGBTQ, that it doesn't mean we are aliens from the child they once knew. Reassure them so they can maybe be supportive at the same time, being true to their values.